Joining us now as we take a cooling off period from basketball, no injuries over the next 15 minutes, is the new assistant head football coach at BYU, Ed Lamb. Coach, welcome to Studio B. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. I never thought my first question to you would be this, but uh, we've got to ask, what do you think of the cancellation of the men's basketball game between BYU and Utah? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know a whole lot about it. I, I, I know there was uh, maybe an altercation on the court, and this is kind of ballooned into you know, Utah canceling it. And, well, I, as being a member of a team, you know, I, I think we all make mistakes at times. We don't want our whole team judged by the mistakes that we make. So I think uh, it, it, kind of a short-sighted uh, decision there, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I'm certain that there are quite a bit of personal fouls and mistakes made by every team over a, over a period of a number of years. So yeah, I hope uh, I hope time time will kind of cool off some of these emotions. Yet, uh, game two is against Utah, and that will be the first kind of BYU-Utah experience. Um, when you played, what was it like for you playing Utah, and how do you maybe translate that into making sure you're ready to play that game for the guys in the fall? Sure, yeah. Well, it's, I mean, the intensity of, of the moment is it builds all year and all week. And um, I grew up in California, so I didn't have as many friends on the opposing side as some of my teammates did, but I think that makes it a more special rivalry. It's like, a, you know, the... the uh, some of the most intense fights and games I've been in have been with my brothers, you know, so, um, and I think that's how a rivalry game ought to be full respect throughout the year for both sides. Sure. And then in the case of a football game, it's four hours of all out war. Maybe it hasn't set in yet. Maybe it has, but, uh, if not, when, when will this whole reality of I'm a coach at BYU take effect for you? Yeah, it's been kind of daily. Yeah. It's, it's been, it's been, really amazing surreal you know there, no question about it I, I'm not sure that I'm quite there yet maybe maybe the first game or or the first practice or maybe it'll be a series of steps toward a realization that that this is <laughs> really going on and I'm back here now in a, in a different role and it's one that so far I've enjoyed very much what was that first day like when you when you got into the office and you, you started to kind of settle in and thought wow I'm I'm here the what was an aha moment maybe yeah, there was no settling. That's the that's the first <laughs> thing. It's like we didn't have. I think it was the third day when Kalani said, uh, "Well, hey, there's a bunch of offices up and down this uh, hallway here. You guys pick one." And, and, and I was like, "Okay, well now I got a place to sit." And you know, we were just it, it was just kind of a whirlwind and all of the all of the minutia of things going on outside of the job. I mean, obviously we're trying to get through the roster. We're trying to figure out recruiting. Those are the two main priorities. But at the same time, you know, it's it's getting new email addresses set up, and then there's the move uh, with what we call the home team, the, the the family back home, and so we've got to work out the logistics in that way. And, and I'm carrying two cell phones for the first time, and so there's <laughs> there's just a lot of things that are it's it, it, we're working through them right now. You mentioned that your pass card works, however, to get into buildings, right? Yes. Well, yeah. and my and my fingerprint, which was big, you know, because that, of course we didn't have that kind of technology when I was here as a player or as a graduate assistant and so you know you need to see the fingerprint pad but I got my fingerprints done and it didn't work for several days and so <laughs> I'm going around knocking on doors and bothering people and can you let me in the building yeah please? it works now <laughs> who is it yeah <laughs> when you when you look at the task ahead Ty Detmer was on the show yesterday and he said it's not football right now it's logistics yeah. you know um how many of those logistics do you have to kind of get through before you can do the football part? It's all about rostering, and and that's uh, you know that's Kalani's background, and that's something I was really pleased. The first few times we talked, he, you know, a lot of his message was like, "Hey, I need you guys speaking to the assistants that that had been hired at that time. I need you guys to handle a lot of this other stuff. I want to continue to make recruiting a high priority for myself, and and obviously for the whole staff. We're only as good as we can recruit." But we don't know who we can recruit until we can really get through the roster. So day one was pulling up all of the video we could and watching the current roster and evaluating where those guys were at. And then, of course, we had to evaluate them academically and, and socially and, and determine their longevity on the roster and then and then build from there. We asked, uh, I believe it was Elisa Tuyaki. Yeah, Elisa Tuyaki, who the biggest personality was thus far that he had met since he'd been a coach at BYU, and he said Jamal Williams. Who would you say is the biggest personality you've come across since you've been here? Yeah, oh, I haven't met a bunch individually, but I would agree with that. Jamal, he, he walked in the office. He acted like he'd known me forever. He complimented my shirt. And, you know, I, I look at some of these, a lot of the young guys nowadays, and I think, man, if I could go back, that's how I would do it, to have that type of confidence and personality. You know, I would have, I would have been afraid to really approach a coach 
in a in a personable way at that age especially upon first meeting him and so it, that was the first day and then the second day i saw him he comes up and, and gives me a big hug and he just the, the, i'm excited to work with not only him but you know all the guys on the team right now is an interesting period i believe it's one more week until january 14th a, a dead period you're limited to what one phone call no in-person visits no text something like that that's right how, yeah. do, you, how do you recruit effectively especially yeah. when you're new yeah. in a dead period yeah oh, well um a, a few technological developments over the last few years have really helped. We can we can instant message now through uh, Facebook or Twitter or things like that. That's helped a ton because in the old days you would you would call somebody and that after that one call per week there was really not an effective way to get in touch with them again and mm. and there's a lot going on. We need NCAA ID numbers, we need updated transcripts. We need to just talk to them and find out if if they're still interested in us or let them know whether or not we're still interested in them. And so we had to work we had to work through coaches and now with with being able to direct message it's it's really slick how did work get done without social media back in the day i yeah, wonder I, sometimes well there, there was more time because the social media also you know they have greater access to <laughs> us too and so we you know we have however whatever the number is that we're recruiting and then quadruple that in terms of the number that are trying to recruit us ed lamb byu assistant football coach with us on byu sports nation making his studio b debut what's the process like getting guys that you are just meeting now that are already in the program that have scholarships to buy into the direction you want to go now? You know, it's, it's going to be, it, that's a continual recruiting process. Recruiting the current roster is a big part of what we do. And it's so early in that process. I, in fact, you know, I, I still think the position group that I'm going to directly work with is, is a little bit up in the air. We want to put the rest of the staff together. And so position control is something that, you know, Kalani and, and Elisa and, and, and I, and, have talked a lot about that's kind of our background and so it's it's the position coach taking that unit that he works with and making sure that every part of their life is on point and those parts where they're meeting challenges that we're there for them and and so I'm anxious to get that position group so I can make my list of guys and start checking out who they are and get to know them and describe to us the process of picking up someone else's recruiting class and then just deciding Yes, we want these guys, and then maybe these guys we don't. What sure. Do you, how, how do you do that? Yeah. Well, uh, at number one, it's the evaluation, and and of course, um, the the previous staff, you know, they were, they were worked hard and were diligent, and they, they had a bunch of great players, and most the vast majority were continuing to recruit as hard as we can. But if we pull up the the video of the high school or or talk to the high school coach and find that it's not a good fit, then the right thing to do is to reach out to that player and say. You know, here's here's our evaluation, right or wrong. And I usually throw in the caveat: most most years, I'm wrong on a few of my evaluations. And and the only thing you have to do is look back at at a signing day party and get a sense for for the recruits that the coaches are most excited about. Four or five years later, that's not always the top guy on the team, <laughs> right? And and so clearly, you know, we're it's not an exact science, and we're wrong, and I'm willing to admit that. But for the player, for that young recruit, it's important for him to know do we think he fits in the system? And so we, we feel like it's our obligation if we don't feel that way, like he's a good fit, and then we need to let him know. You've been a college football head coach and had great success at Southern Utah this last year. Now you transition up to Provo to help a guy that's now in his first year as head coach. So what advice are you giving or will you continue to give to Kalani in terms of running a program? Well, I really want to let him him run the program with his vision. The, the learning curve for a head coach is not as steep, I think, as, as some people might predict. Um, I'm glad to have the opportunity to be there as a sounding board. There aren't too many uh, broad decisions that he makes in the staff room without saying, "What, what do you think, Ed?" Or at least, um, you know, how does that how does that sound? And I and I appreciate the opportunity to be a sounding board. Very rarely is is the difference of opinion worth saying oh well here's what i think you know it's a, he's got a good vision he knows where he wants to go um we're our visions are congruent most of the time and and so i just i enjoy the role that i'm in right now that's the first word the word congruent has been used on that program that's the first time ever that was that was great playing southern utah this next year is that gonna be fun awkward other it's it's going to be a process for me to work out my emotions on that um i'll certainly you know, remain committed to those guys and cheering for their success and, and the staff and the players. I mean, I just, I know all of them so intimately. Um, I, I think I'm going to have to work for my approach mentally leading up to that game. I don't know what it, what it will be right now. I, I'm, 
I'm sure that at that time it's going to feel like you know fighting a brother, and you got to win in the moment. But uh, before and after the game will be a little tough. What does your office look like right now? Uh, it, it's it, if somebody walked in, they wouldn't think it was mine. <laughs> uh, they're, they're still the, the the name on the door is a different name, and uh, there's some there's some hats and things and with and some gear with initials that aren't mine. So I haven't personalized it in any way, and it's kind of my last priority. I do I did bring my BYU degree and. So at the point where I start meeting with the players, of course, I want them to see that, you know, that's something that I'm proud of and something that uh, they need to aspire to get to. How do you give Ty a hard time? I haven't. Because he's I, the king of Provo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I haven't tried that at all yet. Uh, you know, I, um, I've got some, th- I got some things ready to go. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. he was kind of lagging behind the other day. This is the first time I just tried it out. He was lagging behind. We're, we're going to lunch, and he's about. He was about, I don't know, 10, 15 yards behind. I was, yeah, he, was, yeah, he was carrying a backpack. I said, you don't have to carry the Heisman everywhere. But, I mean, <laughs> it, just leave that back in the office. Right? That's good. That's a good. Yeah. yeah, it is a great recruiting tool. If he so chooses to take it with yeah, him on yeah. recruiting trips. Yeah. <laughs> Ed Lamb with us he on the Sports That's Nation. We would like you to uh, give us your John Hancock on our stretch Y flag right back there before you leave. It's been great to have you, you Coach. Mean, glad to do it, and thanks for having me on.